excelled in combat training, helping qualify him for the Galani unit. The Dorber family, Max shared a Benavis club with his brother Jake in August 2005. Like his birth, once again, Max's life was linked to his death in the family. This time with my dad, his beloved grandpa Sandy, who passed away in May, just a few months before his memorial event, his memorable event. And true to his calling, family and friends were united again in celebration of Max's life, healing started, mission accomplished. Max was an excellent student. He completed, he completed high school, attended some college courses, but he began to lose his compass shortly thereafter. His younger brother, Jake, and sister Paige were making arrangements to go to Israel through the birthright program. With a little prop probing, Max agreed to join them. To our delight, our three children, now young adults, departed on a journey in June 2012 for what turned out to be a life-changing experience for all of them, but particularly for Max. Upon Max's return to the States in July, he immediately told us of his decision to return to Israel. He shared with us how he connected with the country in a way he could not have imagined. He told us how he loved its beauty, but mostly he loved the people. Max was 22 and believed that he may one day choose to make Israel his permanent home. He also believed that he had a responsibility to serve in the Israeli Defense Forces while he was still of the acceptable age for enlistment. Once Max set his sight on a course, his competitive juices started to flow. Within weeks of his return, he had made contact with the IDF and put the wheels in motion. Max completed the enlistment forms, spent as much valuable time as he could with family and friends before returning to Israel in September of 2012. With the assistance of a Los Angeles friend, Fred Pesson, Max was invited to live with his uncle and cousins in Deir Shiva. We are extremely grateful to Fred and his family for providing Max with food and shelter, but mostly a family, Max would connect to awaiting his training. Family was very important to Max. He called us nearly every day while serving. But for Max to leave his family to become a lone soldier in Israel, it truly had to be his calling. Max started training in December of 2012. Even though he did not speak Hebrew, Max was committed to joining the Galani Unit 13. Max was earning recognition for his combat and leadership skills. In early 2013, Max was called in for an interview for Galani. Max was told that he could not be accepted in the Galani Unit due to inadequate language skills and asked whether else, what other, what, uh, where else would he be willing to serve. Max told him there was no other place to serve. When they, when they persisted, they asked him repeatedly, he finally came to them and said, look, my answer is the same. If it's not Kalani, it is jail or it's home. Max was sent home with the understanding that he could reapply upon his return in one month. To our benefit, we got to spend some time with him. To Max's credit, he returned and not only got accepted into Galani, he got accepted into Galani Unit 13. Max had achieved his goal and was well aware of the personal risks associated with this elite unit. Through his proficiency in shooting, Max was recognized and given the designation of responsibility of sharpshooter, mission accomplished. Max earned a trip home in April 2014. He took advantage of his homecoming and enjoyed a wonderful family vacation in Mammoth Lakes Mountain in California. We immediately recognized the growth and maturity Max was gaining from his experience while serving. Max returned to fulfill his final months of service on the Syrian border when the war broke out in Gaza. His unit was repositioned outside Gaza, awaiting instruction for ground troops to move in. On Saturday, July 19th at 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we got a call from Max saying that they actually went into Gaza. He told us that a tank had collided with the tank he was riding in. There were injuries, and he, along with other soldiers in his unit, returned for medical treatment. He told us that some of the soldiers had broken bones. He said that he was sore, but he needed, he, but he needed to return to action. He had to get back to his friends. He told, he, we told each other how much we love each other, and we wish him a safe return. 
On Sunday at approximately 8 a.m. July 20th, three wonderful, respectful, and kind representatives of the Israeli Consulate of Los Angeles arrived at our home. They shared the horrific news that Max was killed during his mission into Gaza. They embraced us and provided us with as much comfort as humanly possible under the circumstances. We initially said that we wanted to bring our son back home to Los Angeles. After further thought, we came to realize that was our selfishness. I just want him near me and wanted to be able to go see him every day if I needed to. But after being in Israel and seeing all the love and support and how he is treated and remembered here, we decided that Mac needed to remain in Israel, no longer the lone soldier, forever at his home. We concluded that the Israeli people would honor him for his sacrifice and provide him with the lasting respect he deserves. Mission accomplished. As Jews, we are at awe of what Max achieved from the moment he said, I am returning to Israel. As parents, we are filled with joy and pride for the man that our son became and the life that he lived. While he touched so many people in his youth, Max raised the bar as a man and as a lone soldier for the Galani Group, Unit 13 of the IDF. Mission accomplished, Max. We send our sincere condolences to all of the IDF fallen soldiers and pray for peace. To our beloved son, may your memory burn everlasting in the hearts of your friends here in Israel, as it will amongst all your family and friends in the United States of America. Bless, God bless us all in the state of Israel. Um, Yisrael Pat. Amen.